Hey everybody, welcome to, or welcome back to Ogre Speed Shop. Today's episode, we're gonna go over the do's and don'ts of properly setting up fuel lines and transmission lines, connecting hard lines to rubber lines, and the proper ways to do that using the proper flares. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about the proper flaring of doing fuel lines and transmission lines. I can go over a few different brake line fittings as well. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is different kinds of tools that we have. I've only got two different ones, but one of them pretty much covers everything. And I'll show you that right now. So the first one, I'm sure everybody's seen this style of flaring tool. This here is just a single flare tool. I don't have the double flare attachment that goes with it. And it's really glaring. So that's one type of flaring tool. The main one that I use is this universal hydraulic flaring tool by MasterCool. What makes this nice is it's hydraulic. So it has all these different fittings. These are all different double flare fittings, all the way up to half inch from 3 16 to half inch. So you got 3 16 uh, quarter inch, 5 16 3 8 half inch. I think for the most of the part, I've only used the 3 16 for a few brake lines, quarter for rear brake lines, 5 16 can be a return line for fuel, 3 8 are pretty much. Uh, you know, your fuel in or your fuel supply. So that's what, you know, those are basically used for. Half inch, I haven't used that except for I did some uh, stainless steel lines one time, which is a pain. And other than that, that's basically what you have for your, your double flare. Then you have your GM line form fitting, which is basically, if you look over here, I've made a couple examples. And this is what a GM style line fitting fit uh, is. Now I don't really think that this is what GM uses that much because I haven't really seen that much. The ones I've seen the most are based on this style, which is a push lock style. And the push lock fittings uh, are, you'll see here in a picture, is what goes on these. I don't have one available right now. So but this is what they go on to. And this is what's also going to a lot of uh, fuel filters that GM uses that click in. So then you have your hydraulic press here as well. And then these are the actual push lock fittings that I was talking about. And then you can actually do bubble flares too, metric bubble flares with this kit. So it's really an all around good kit and I wish it wasn't glaring so much, but you get the idea of what we got going on here. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna demonstrate how you use it here in a minute. So the different types of flares we use, you have your double flare right here is what it turns out to be. You can kind of see where it rolls over. And there isn't a sharp edge on it. So that's what your double flare looks like. Now on this one, yeah, it's a single flare. And the thing I don't like about this is that's actually a pretty sharp edge because it's just single flare. I used this tool over here to make that this morning uh, for an example it doesn't have that extra rolled over area to help seal and it just it it's pretty sharp so it could cut into a line too as well so i'll talk about that in a minute and we kind of already touched on the push lock fittings and then your gm fuel line fittings and what I'm gonna be using for example for hose is just some 3 8 fuel hose. This is not for fuel injection, it's just for carburation, which we're pretty much gonna talk about. You don't wanna use, you wanna use very little hose, fuel inj or rubber hose with fuel injection in my opinion. You wanna to go to a PTFE style hose or a braided line, sort of like what I have in the Firebird here. You can see it right there some, and it goes up to the, you kind of see it right there. Some dash three or dash six AN fittings with uh, braided and cloth covered lines, what I use. And it's just that it works a little better and it holds up a lot better than the pressure of fuel injection. So let's go ahead and uh, show you an example of what I'm talking about as far as improper ways of clamping off fuel lines or transmission lines. All right, so now we're getting the do's and don'ts of 
doing your fuel lines and your transmission lines. So we're gonna go with the don'ts first. First don't is this right here. You don't wanna put hose on a flat line like that because you put that on there, even if you tighten it down, that's gonna come right off. So you don't want that to happen. So you wanna make sure you do some kind of a flare or something on it. Another don't you wanna do, you don't wanna do is put rubber hose onto a single flare or a double flare. Cause if you can imagine with that going on there like that, the damage is gonna do to the hose. So I've seen this before, people do do it and they force it on there and clamp it down and it ends up slicing through the hose, causing a leak or, you know, could cause a fuel leak, which could cause a fire. So just be careful with that. You don't want to do that. What you do want to do though, is use that right there. A nice little flare. Just space a little bubble. I'm going to show you how to make that in a minute. But you take that, loosen your hose up here. Stick that over so it goes over nice and easy. Put the hose clamp over. And tighten it down. That ain't going to go nowhere. So if you see that, you can see there's a nice little bubble in there. You don't have to worry about that coming off there. That will stay on there. So you can use that from your fuel tank to the main line to the front because there's always a piece of rubber to hosing in there. Or anywhere in, in between where you have to repair it or whatever, you still want to flare it. So that's what you want to do as far as, you know, that's the do. That's the way you want to do it. And we'll get into how to make that here in a minute. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do these flares now. So basically what I'm gonna show you first is how to make the actual double flare like we, we showed here. So we're gonna set, gonna set it all up so you can see how that works. And then I'll go ahead and show you how I do my little bubble flare for doing your rubber to hardline fuel fittings. So first thing you wanna do is put your die in here. This is a 3 8 inverted die. The way you do this is you set your, put your tube in there and then you put it in flush against the, you want the, it to line up flush with the end of the die. I don't know why it's so loose, but. So basically you bring this tube in here. You can see where it's got sticking out a little bit there. And then you bring it back till it's flush with the, with the die. And that's where your starting point is. So you just gotta kinda eyeball it, get it flush with it, tighten this down. Make sure you tighten it down really tight because it does, it will slip on you. So that's your first part. Next thing you do is you grab your die. This is your 3 8 45 degree inverted flare. Stick that in there. As you see, it'll go down into that tube to make your flare. Twist it in until it stops, close your valve, and just press it in. Loosen the handle and spin it back out. And that is your first step to doing an inverted flare. So you pull that out. Now you grab your cone right here, your 45 degree cone. If you look down in there, you can see how it does that inverted flare. So I started out with the big bubble there and it's filled that little chamfer in there. And you put your 45 in there, your cone, and repeat the process. Go in until it stops, tighten it down, and then just go till it stops. Back it off. Pull your die out, loosen your clamp, pull it out, and look at that. You got a perfect inverted flare. So now you can use that. Or I should put this on first just so I can demonstrate it, but that goes with a typical tube nut. So that would be on there and it goes up in there and you'd be able to put that into a fitting whether it be a radiator or a carburetor or even a, a junction, like you can get a, you know, 
to put two hard lines together. So you can do that. I don't know why I can't come up with what that term is, but so yeah, you can put those two together. All right, so now that you see how to do a double flare, I'm gonna show you how you go ahead and do this. Just a little bubble in there. It's as simple as it can get. So if you're using the same dies, put that in there, get it twisted and turned in there and tight. Okay, back it off a little bit. And you put your tube in there, same exact way. This isn't as crucial as lining it up for this, but you know, I try to do it just to keep it where it needs to be. Then you can tighten this down. And again, tighten it nice and tight. So now you're gonna take your inverted flare fitting. You're gonna do the same thing, put it in there, screw it in just like we did on the last one until it stops. But the difference here is we're not gonna go very far. So basically what happens is you get that tension on there, you squeeze it, and you'll, you'll, you'll feel a little, just a little place where it just breaks free, right about there. And it's not very far in. You can loosen that up now, back it out. And that's all you gotta do to do that little flare to prevent your rubber hose from coming off your hard line. And see like that, see it makes a perfect little bubble there. Now you can put the hose on there, just like I showed you before. Put the clamp on there, and that thing will not come off, just like I showed before. So that's how you do a sweet little bubble flare like that, just to get, you know, to put your hard line to your rubber line without it coming off. So now you got a good clamp on there, and that thing will last as long as the hose lasts. That's it. All right, well, that concludes this episode of Ogre Speed, Ogre Speed Shop. I hope it's a video that you enjoyed and learned something from. Do you have any questions about it or comments? Go ahead and leave them down below. If you want to, you can go ahead and subscribe. Leave a like down there if you liked the video. And again, thank you for hanging out here at Ogre Speed Shop. Until next time.